Hey guys, just really quick before we get started with the video here, I have a quick channel update at the end of this video, so stick around to the end if you want to find out more. What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite, and it's been way too long since I've said this. Welcome back to Generation Zero. So patch 1.06 is now live, and that means that PS4 players can finally enjoy the update that came out earlier this week for Generation Zero. So in this video, I'm just going to talk really quickly over some of my favorite things from this update, talk about a couple things going on in the future for future updates for Generation Zero, and then uh, we might go off and look for a little Easter egg that came up in this update. But, before we start talking about some of my favorite things from this update, I'd really quickly like to just give a huge shout out to the Generation Zero development team. It's been like, maybe three days since the initial error actually popped up, and uh, they've already got it fixed. So that is crazy, crazy amounts of work. I'm sure that they have definitely busted their asses and worked very long days in order to get this fixed for us. So, um, yeah, just a huge shout out to the dev team for getting this all fixed up for us within the week. So the number one thing that I'm loving the most out of this update is the new set locations. All of these new objects that have been placed down into the world have been considered as set pieces to the developers. So that means that when you're exploring around and you find an overturned car, odds are you're going to find some sort of a robot there that caused that destruction. Or say if you come across a military tent somewhere out in the open, you're going to find robots patrolling around that tent uh, and further exemplifying why there are even dead bodies there in the first place. So as the updates move forward, I would really like to see this whole random set piece thing to be kind of expanded on by the developers. Uh, I would really like to see these set pieces get bigger and get more interactive, um, potentially have more surprises for us than just a couple ticks in the area. But uh, for now, I think that this is an awesome step in the right direction. The next thing that I'd like to talk about too that's another change that I'm thoroughly enjoying is the fact that there seems to be more objects in the world that you could pick up. Instead of looking inside of um, containers and loot containers for the explosives that we've been finding, uh, we'll now be able to find some of them, or at least the barrels, in uh, the various locations around the map, so warehouses or the rundown shacks or anything like that. Um, and I really like that because then it means that, again, we're just interacting with the world a little bit more. Uh, I really wouldn't mind us being able to find more loot kind of scattered freely out in the world as opposed to just in containers. So next up, they've added an iron sight to the uh, 50 cal. So let's see what this iron sight's like. I think it's pretty cool. It's got the whole uh, glowing um, glowing sight kind of thing to it, and that's pretty cool. Um, and it does seem to function pretty good as a sight. I think, I think you could potentially actually rock the Panzer without... Um, without a sight on it now which would be kind of kind of a cool way to use a 50 cal uh so yeah so this is a nice little touch coming into the game too so the next thing that we're going to check out here is that stats apparently uh display properly on clothes here so we're going to go through and see if uh these are actually making a change oh it doesn't look like it <laughs> So let's let's go through really quickly here. Yeah, it seems like all of the stats for everything is still down at uh, 1%, even though it is showing the appropriate stat. The stats are still not being applied. So hopefully we'll see that fixed in the future. To the player. So we're going to test this out really quickly here. Just pop down a whole bunch of landmines. This will be a good test, too, to see how much damage explosives actually do here. Oh, it doesn't seem like very much, though. Hmm. Alright, let's really quickly get out our hand grenades here. Yeah. 
Yeah, it really seems like explosions aren't doing very much damage at all. So there we go. A couple little quick tests and a couple things just running around seeing how this new update works. So uh, for the whole explosive thing, it is really sad to see that get nerfed so intensely. But I'm sure that within the next update or potentially within a quick patch, uh, we'll be seeing that get fixed very, very soon. So moving on to the last thing here. All right, so for the last thing we're going to talk about here, let's talk about photo mode for a second. So photo mode is now automatically put into your emote wheel, which I don't know if I'm too happy with or not. Uh, I, I kind of think having the ability to choose what goes into your emote wheel is better than having something locked in there. But if that's gonna be the way it is, then that's just going to be the way it is. Uh, at least when it is on the wheel, you do have quick access to take a picture whenever you want. Um, so when you are in this whole uh, photo mode thing, let's talk about some of these settings and some of these effects for you guys. So let's talk about these settings really quickly here. So uh, when it comes to depth of field, depth of field is pretty obvious as to what it does. As you increase the depth of field uh, bar here, it will decrease the amount of clarity that you have in your background. So making a bit of a blurred background can sometimes really highlight things in a picture that you're planning on taking. So if you manage to take a picture with something in the foreground, but then you drop the depth of field by increasing it all the way up, um, you'll wind up focusing on that thing in the foreground a lot better. Uh, equally so, you can then take your focus point and wherever you've set up your depth of field to be, uh, your focus point will kind of affect the intensity of that blur. So if you increase your focus point, you'll notice that you can now see the trees in the background a lot better hopefully, as long as YouTube doesn't compress this video too much. But then when you bring down the focus point, it will add to the blur effect that you see in the background. And then exposure is just simply how much light will actually be given off from a light source. So at 64, this is kind of sitting around a bit of a middle range, what you would normally see. But you can make things extra blighted by bringing the brightness and exposure way up, not that high. But if you bring the exposure up to around the mid 80s here, it seems like it really does a lot for the brightness of your photo. Whereas if you drop the exposure entirely, then you're going to wind up with an incredibly dark photo. But you can sometimes utilize exposure to, again, uh, make accents in whatever picture it is you're taking a little bit more. And then going down the list here, we have field of view pitch and yaw. So basically all of these are going to affect where your photo is going to be taking its picture from. So uh, as you increase the field of view, you'll be able to get a more wide shot kind of picture. And as you decrease the field of view, you'll be able to zoom in and kind of utilize this as a process of uh, having like a zoom function on your camera. For the pitch and the yaw, it's all just about the angle that your picture is going to be taken from. So for the pitch, if you increase it, the angle will go up, and if you decrease it, the angle goes down. So you can potentially utilize this to um, center your picture a little bit better on the thing that you're actually aiming to take a picture of. So say if I wanted to take a picture of me and this guy, I'd need to have my pitch all the way down here, and I'd maybe need to bring my yaw, which is your right and left turning of the camera, just a little bit more over this way. And so, yeah, utilizing your pitch and yaw will help you get a better angle on your picture. And then you can use the roll to change the angle that the camera will be sitting at. So you can do kind of like a Dutch angle on your, on your photo if you want to. All right, so now let's get into the effects here. And this first one is probably one that had a lot of people scratching their heads being like, what the heck is chromatic aberration? Um, so what chromatic aberration is, is it's pretty much, it's like a thing that creates a 3D visual effect in video games, as the best I can describe it in kind of simple terms here. So, if you turn up this bar, what I believe that's going to wind up doing is creating more of a 3D effect here. And then when you decrease this bar, it kind of very subtly 
makes all of the background things blend a little bit more on the same plane. It's a bit hard to tell because right now I've got my field of focus right where my character is, right with this body here. But um, if you just pay attention to the background here, you can tell out a lot of distinguishment from the trees where each of the trees are sitting. And now it kind of looks like all of the trees are sitting on the exact same kind of plane. Uh, and then next up, a much easier thing to describe and show to you guys is the vignette. And what a vignette is, is it's pretty much just the effect of having a lens around the edges of your picture. It could be very nice for making a picture look more like a photograph as opposed to a screenshot. And so for the noise, the noise is a really cool thing. So you'll be able to combine noise and filters in order to produce more old-timey effects on your photos. So let's put in just a little bit of noise here. I'm saying just like maybe 20. And you can kind of notice that my screen's gone all granulated now. And now if we flip through some of these filters, you'll notice that that granulation actually will come into play here with these filters a lot better, especially this black and white. Noise and black and white is a, a perfect combination. So um, yeah, so noise is pretty much just how um, how many particles you're actually seeing or how uh, jagged the particles are actually against them. Um, next up is lens dirt. And so, you know, that, that again is just kind of self-explanatory. But with lens dirt, uh, I feel like we'll be able to do things like um, uh, wow, I'm totally blanking on the word. But here, let's see if I can kind of get that to happen. So as you turn the dirt towards the light, you'll notice that the dirt is getting more caught by the light. So you're able to get these cool little like glowing spots uh, on your camera and on your image and stuff. I definitely fucked up that. <laughs> but whatever, we're just going to move forward. Um, next up is the glow. <laughs> glow up. So there we go. Uh, again, it's just kind of a brightness setting, but uh, it seems to be not quite as harsh as the exposure would be in the camera settings. Uh, brush strokes. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Adding more to the noise effect, and this almost gives it like a drawn sort of effect. That's pretty cool. Uh, next up is outlines. Okay. Again, this is giving it almost like a comic book effect. That's pretty neat, too. And then we got a whole bunch of color tints, in which case I would advise you don't mess with these color tints too much unless if you want to make, like, a really crazy, like, friggin' psychedelic kind of picture. Let's see if we can get things to be a little bit more psychedelic. There we go. Something like that maybe would work. Um, but yeah, you can kind of affect the RGB of your picture. And then filters. Everybody knows what a camera filter is. So you got the vintage, the sepia, the black and white, uh, a cartoon, which, oh dude, if you were to combine the cartoon and the outline, what up? There we go. Comic books. Um, cartoon 2. That's cool. So cartoon 2 is like a black and white cartoon. Nice. So it'd be cool to see them expand on the filters a little bit in the future. Uh, it'd be nice to see maybe some more kind of radical filters come out uh, around this photo mode. All right, so now that we're done breaking down the photo mode, let's talk about this next little Easter egg. So this Easter egg is the holy hand grenade from Monty Python. <laughs> what the hell? I didn't expect to see that in this game. So I, I feel like I have to do this. Bless this, O Lord, that with it thou mayst blow thine enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. So right now, it seems like the Holy Hand Grenade maybe doesn't do anything. Some people have said that it doesn't do anything, but let's find out. Let's pull this. Count to three. Oh, it's gone. Okay. All right, let's try again. And nothing. <laughs> and it doesn't do anything. 
the the holy hand grenade is a holy dud. So there we go, my dudes. A uh, little bit of my favorite things from the update, and then a uh, fun little Easter egg. So now let's talk about what's coming around in the next update. So the word on the street is that the June update is going to be the final fix for all of the missions and all of the bunkers and all of that stuff. So for any of you guys that have been holding off from the game because maybe your experience was hampered from something being broken, next month we have that to look forward to. Uh, there is no estimated date on when that update will be out, but I could assume that since we saw the May update around the end of the month, that we won't be seeing this update until around probably the same time. Um, but that is a huge thing to look forward to because, in my personal opinion, if they can squash a couple more bugs inside of that uh, patch next month, like the enemies teleporting through walls or anything like that, or maybe even just, like, dampen the bugs a little bit, then maybe we could start finally looking at Generation Zero being in a state to move on to some new content, which is incredibly quick. Uh, you know, the whole PS4 bug for 1.5 was really, really bad, but now that I've been playing in 1.5, I've noticed very minimal issues in comparison to when I started playing this game. And a lot of the things that I've had problems with um, have been smoothed out to the point where I barely notice them anymore. Um, I know that for some people, they have had incredibly negative experiences with this game, and for that, I, I'm really sorry to hear that because uh, the Generation Zero is probably one of the best games I've ever played, and uh, all of these updates keep proving that. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, the development team must have worked like mad lads to get this patch out before the weekend and before the holiday that happens for Sweden. Um, I, I believe that it happens today, too, so uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah, so I think that Generation Zero, as much as people might not think it, is moving along um, quickly and helpfully and in a good good direction, too, in my opinion. And lastly, I'm just going to have a little section here about myself. I try to not talk about myself too much on the channel here, outside of things pertaining to the video game. But I just felt like it was kind of necessary for me to explain the content slowdown over the span of the l last month or so now. Um, so I've been in the process of uh, moving house and trying to move into a house that will have a better situation for me to take on this YouTube thing. As of right now, um, I record out of my living room, and it's not, it's not exactly uh, the best situation that my recording could be. So, um, yeah, so over the span of the last month, I've been having people come through my house and making offers and stuff, and I've finally made a sale. So that means that uh, I will be moving into a new place, hopefully within the next month, and I'm really, really hoping that I can get a place that will have some sort of a uh, work area that I can set up my YouTube stuff in. So apologies if any of you guys have been missing the Tenebris content out there. It's coming back, it's coming back, and when it does, it's going to be ten times better than it was even before. So, uh, you know, this is just a little bit of downtime in my life uh, where I am trying to make things a little bit better, uh, just to make things better overall. Um, but there we go. That's that for this uh, quick update video uh, around update 1.05. Uh, you guys let me know your experience with it down in the comments. I want to know what you guys think about those scenes that they've set up around the world. And I want to know what you guys think about the photo mode and all of that stuff. And yeah, it's just it's so good to be back in Generation Zero. So uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.